Today we're taking a look at upgrading my Ancient PF Sense build. This build was kind of a quick build because my PF Sense firewall basically just started crashing randomly about once per day. That is super bad when you and your significant other work from home. You kind of need your internet. It turns out that after many years of solid performance, my integrated Atom J3455M developed a bit of a memory issue. I know that for the price of lunch, I probably could have replaced this DDR3 memory stick, but I really just wanted to grab some new hardware and build off of that. I did reuse some items from the previous build though. The Rosebell 2U case, my old Seasonic 550 watt PSU, and I grabbed an older Samsung 840 EVO with a low amount of hours on it. As for the new stuff in this build, I went for the ASRock B660M Pro RS motherboard, an Intel G7400 CPU, and basically the cheapest stick of crucial 8GB DDR4-3200 that I could find. This system is relatively low spec for like a workstation or a gaming PC, but for a PFSense firewall router type build, this is actually plenty of power. The B660M Pro RS is a pretty decent motherboard. I've actually used this motherboard in other builds before, so I have a little bit of experience with it. I could have saved a couple of bucks on this board here and went a little bit lower end, but since I've used it before and I really like it, I wanted to stick with this one. Plus, if I ever have to reuse this hardware in some other type of build, this motherboard gives me quite a few options with the PCI Express slots, the M.2 slots, and four memory DIMM slots. The G7400 I basically got a while ago, and I thought that this would be the perfect use for it. Two cores with hyper-threading at 3.7 GHz each is plenty for a firewall like this. As for the memory, I definitely did not need 8GB, but I didn't really want to buy a 4GB DIMM, and it was so cheap that 8GB3200 is what I ended up grabbing. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention I did reuse my 4-port Intel NIC. What I do with this card is basically I run my Ethernet connection from my ISP into this, I run the connection from my PFSense router to my main switch, and then I have one more connection which basically goes off to a firewalled network that I use for connecting devices that I generally don't trust or I don't know if I trust yet. So I have that going into this firewall as well. My internet connection right now is 300 up and 300 down, but I have no doubt that this setup could easily handle one or probably even two or two and a half gigabit home internet. My PFSense setup is relatively light. I do run a couple of packages, but I really don't require a ton of CPU or memory power. The power consumption for this build is pretty nice. Generally speaking, it's between 15, 18 watts, though I have seen it go down a little bit less here and there. The old setup was around 9 to 11 watts, if I remember correctly. That's really not too much in terms of power increase, and this CPU is way stronger than the old J3455M. By the time this video goes up, I've had this running as my PFSense router for a little while now, and generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with it. If you're thinking about building your own PFSense router, and you're still using something like your ISP router, or just something cheap that you bought at like a big box store, I would definitely consider giving PFSense a try. PFSense is free software, it's super stable, very well documented, and it's very powerful. You can do quite a bit with this. If any of you are interested in seeing me build out any type of configuration, or if you have any questions about PFSense, definitely post it in the comments below. And I would also definitely recommend, if any of you are on the verge of setting up your own home lab, that you definitely go with PFSense. There's tons of guides out there, you can do quite a bit, it really is a solid choice. Until next time, keep your system up and running.